Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Monies with Mover. I am Mover, C.W. Lemoyne, author of the Spectre series and the Alex Shepard series. If you haven't checked out Spectre Rising, it is a good F-16 book uh, that uh, you might enjoy if you like uh, military espionage thrillers and F-16s. Uh, so it was the first book I wrote, pretty technical, but uh, you might enjoy it. Today's episode, we're back in the F-16 doing part two of uh, the early, early access uh, DCS uh, F-16 Viper based off the Block 50. Remember, this is a beta version, so uh, still a work in progress, and I have not flown an F-16 in uh, since 2012, and uh, I've never flown a Block 50. So some differences between the Block 50 and the Block 30 uh, exist, but uh, still an F-16 is an F-16. Originally, I actually filmed it all in one take. However, uh, what, for whatever reason, the second part only filmed my microphone for about the first four or five minutes. So now I'm refilming the entire thing. So, uh, But since then, there's been a couple updates and there's a couple clarifications I want to make. Uh, the first one people have asked about the EPU check and why I did it so late. I had a, uh, it was like a Greek Air Force checklist. So it wasn't what I normally would have used. Throughout my entire career, yes, we would have done the uh, EPU check fairly early. Uh, on in the in the uh, startup there, but uh, for whatever reason, it just uh, is what it is. So uh, that's one. And then second, uh, I talked about list four and it not being implemented. List four you would use when you're uh, to make sure your GPS keys are valid. So that is part of your INS, uh, the Iggy initialization. However, when you first go to nav uh, down here, what happens is this page will pop up list six and that gives you your uh, alignment status which is not so great right now and your coordinates so you'd enter in your coordinates it's like waypoint zero in the hornet you would enter in your coordinates usually what's on the ramp or what you have in your in-flight guide or whatever you'd enter those in or sometimes it's actually on the uh, shelter itself you enter those in that gives it a starting position and then it starts aligning the INS and then it uses GPS to tighten that up so that's uh, kind of how that works so uh, real quick before we get started I'm gonna go ahead and set everything up the game plan is still uh, as before to go do a um, uh, to go do some advanced handling stuff and then after we do that we'll do some um, patterns so I'm gonna do an ILS which I've got set up 1087 and then 92 all right the first thing we're gonna do uh, there's a horn awareness demo and we'll do we'll just go straight to five because there's no real reason to do any of the other ones because you know it's it's not like you're gonna be but the, the whole purpose of the horn awareness training is to a let you see what the horn is and practice recovering from high AOA maneuvering. So what we'll do, 300 knots, mill power, and then at, at 10 to 20 degrees, and then we're just gonna keep pulling to the limiter. There's the horn, I'm gonna unload, let the nose fall. And we're gonna recover at 200 knots. Got a little slow, but I wanted you to see the horn. There's 200 knots, recover. All right, so it wasn't exactly pretty, but uh, good enough. You got to hear the horn, and that's that's the uh, high angle of attack. And there's actually a chart for when the, the horn will activate. Uh, it's very specific, but um, usually you're at that 25 alpha um, and inside of the parameter score. Next thing we'll do is the uh, AOA limiter demo. 1,000 feet, 250 knots level, so we'll climb up. We're going to trim for 1G level, and a lot of people ask, "Would well, you know? Do you trim much in this jet?" Not really. Every now and then, it may need a click or two, but 
for the most part, no. All right, so there's 250 knots. Start adding back stick pressure uh, once we get past 15 to 25 alpha. So as you can see, the AOA is about six right now. I think the trim is good where it's at. So we're gonna go idle. And again, it would be 15,000 feet AGL, but whatever. And so you can see right here, AOA starts to climb because it wants to, it seeks that 1G level flight. There's 10 degrees of alpha. And the nose just climbing. I mean, I, my hands are off right now. It's 13 alpha. There's 15 alpha. And then 25. We're going to keep pulling back. There we go. 20 alpha. And we're going to hit 25 alpha. And now sticks full aft. And you can see the nose is gonna fall because it's gonna maintain 25 alpha the whole time. And if you see the rudders, they don't do anything. Unlike, you know, we talked about the T-38, high alpha, the rudders work, uh, not in the F-16 based on how the Flickus is designed. So, Anyway, so to recover, we just unload, let the AOA break. It's gonna go back to that 15 alpha. We'll let the nose fall. And when we hit 200 knots, we'll recover. Pretty simple stuff. See how it tracks uh, 1G. So we use afterburner for this because we can and because we're fat on gas. All right, so we'll make sure we're above 10,000 feet. which we are. All right. Degrees nose high. And that's using the boresight cross. We're gonna hold that there and let go. And now with hands off, aircraft seeking 1G. And so when we hit 60, we're gonna roll And watch now, inverted, it does the same thing. It starts to, it seeks that 1G as the nose drops. There goes 1G, 0.9, close enough. There goes inverted. And 200 knots, we will cover the nearest horizon. One thing you'll notice, the, uh, the sky pointer. So they're curved to point towards the horizon. So if you're ever trying to recover uh, they try to get you towards level flight. So if I go up, I'm looking for the horizon. See the brackets actually point back down. If I go down, the brackets point up. And the more extreme it gets, the more of an angle you get. So just if, uh, if you're ever spatial need or whatever, recognize, confirm, and recover. All right, so now uh, we're going to get set up and go out and do an ILS for the RTB.
So we've got the course set in 092. We'll set, uh, that's fine. ILS is on 092.1087. And the TACAN frequency for it is 24. And that gets you your DME, so. Slow to 250. Go down to 8,000 feet. All right, 24-1087-092. We got that set up. Okay, that's good. I think we might be too far out in the mountains. I back myself up with the uh, steer point just in case. And we've already got the uh, glide slope capture and a localizer, so we don't need that. So we're just gonna fly what the flight directors say and go from there. 11 miles on the ILS, so we can put the thing on the thing. And my crappy vectors have overshot us, which is okay, because we'll, we'll take a little cut back. But we're at nine miles, we'll go ahead and drop the gear and we'll start down. So if you start out high, that's fine. You can transition to localizer minimums, uh, which I don't really have, but we can transition to localizer minimums. Then once we capture the glide slope, um, we can go back and fly the actual glide slope. So we're looking for 11 AOA. Why am I not tracking? Oh, because I'm attacking. So you won't get the tadpole while you're on a gross deviation like this. I'm just flying raw data. Fast. So there's a glide slip intercept. We're still about a dot high, half a dot high. All right, got handle down three green, boards are feathered. Now we've captured. Use the flight director here. Altitude. Altitude. 700. It kind of wants to snake me around, but we'll fly the instruments. Alright, taking over visually, 
And we'll low approach. Altitude. Altitude. All right, we'll do one more of those, and then we'll come back out for the uh, straight in SFO. All right, there's 10 miles, we'll short vector. Other thing I changed, uh, I thought it had its own DME frequency, but that didn't dial in, so this time I'm just gonna run off the tack in. And we're going way too fast, because I wanted to speed things up. There may be a way to do it, but it would be a nice thing to be able to fast forward through time, because you can do that in uh, military sims. Instead of having to fly all the way out. All right, we've already got case break, so it's going to be a continuing right-hand turn. Uh, all the way over. We'll go zero five zero. Okay, glide slope's captured. We'll just say they said 6,000 till established. A lot of these with mountainous terrain, they'll keep you high. So you, you may start out fairly high on the glide slope before you intercept. There is localizer capture. Throw the gear down, board's coming out, slow on the final. And I didn't dial up weather, but if there were weather, I mean, this is exactly what it would look like. I'd have the steer point diamond on the end of the runway uh, to back me up, I'd have the tack end up and be using the glide slope. But apparently the INS is drifting now. That's interesting. Huh. Weird. So now we've got the tadpole. Let's see if putting the thing on the thing works this time. All right, so we're glides up intercept gear down, low approach. Altitude, altitude. All right, 700 feet.
high. Yeah, I think the tadpole's a little off, but all good. Raw data works fine, which has a flight director. And low approach. Altitude. Altitude. Now we'll light the blower and go out to uh, straight in SFO. So we'll go out to, uh, let's call it 12 miles, 12,000 feet AGL. All right, so there's 10 miles. So let's say we lost the engine. We would zoom, but we're not going to, just to show the one-to-one -one here. All right, so 220 is what we're gonna pitch for. And now we're just getting on profile, so one-to-one. -one. We're at 10,000, 11,000 feet AGL, so we're good. I see the runway. And we're going to point. And now the rule of thumb is when do you lower the gear? Well, 11 to 17 degrees in the HUD. So 17 degrees would be you've got a Cat 3 jet. You don't want to drop your stores. 11 to 12 degrees would be... I'm in a, an air-to-air -air configured jet like we are. So uh, there you go. It's about 11. We drop the gear. We're going really fast. That's good. We're below 300 knots. So I'm going to fan the boards here. And knowing that my gear's down and I've got my optimum speed, I'm going to aim short. So the fence is okay. And remember, uh, 200 knots minimum here with the gear down. So we got plenty of speed. And it's like, this is what the space shuttle does. Honestly, it's the same profile as a space shuttle. There's 2,000 feet, we've got it made. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that out, halfway. There we go. In the overrun. Altitude, altitude. I don't wanna swap in, so take a little bit of that out. bit and the goal is to arrive in a position where we could land I'm not going to touch down obviously 20 feet off 11 to 13 in the landing distance looks good there we go maybe could have let it float a little bit more but
So on the go here, we'll go to high key, and I was just thinking this is uh, about 3,000 AGL. So actually, we should go about 10,000 AGL for high key. So we'll go up to high key. And it's a right hand, so it's usually opposite direction of whatever your break is. So if we're doing a right break, you'd go right to a left hand high key. But in this case, um, I'm doing everything to the left because going left is... So 3,000 pounds, we'll call it um, 215, 205, 195. And there's about 7,000 feet AGL. So we'll be excess energy there. So we'll call high key. And we'll be high on energy, so we'll go gear down now for low key. And low key's just past a beam. There you go. 5,000 feet. Banking a little should be more, no more than about 55 degrees of bank, so I'm kind of over banking here. And then it's the same thing, you're just you're aiming short. So we do a checkpoint 2,000 feet. Do we have the runway made? We do, we have 250 knots. I'm gonna fan the boards a little bit, get those out. Remember, you're gonna take off and landing gauge, so you don't necessarily have the authority that you thought. And we're into the overrun. And it's a low approach. We do this so we don't use up the tires. And also because you land so long, you probably have the hook down to take an arrested landing. So we look, and apparently I touch down again. Okay, well, I wouldn't want to touch down. All right, that's enough. You get the idea. Let's do some uh, patterns here. Let's do a burner closed. All right, so uh, request closed, closed pattern approved. And what, about 4,500 feet, 4,600 feet? Handle down three green. A little wide, that's okay. Yeah, there you go. All right, uh, Mako 1 1 base gear, low approach. And you're just looking at the top of the staple. I don't really calculate speeds here because you got the top of the staple. Way wide, perch long. So, Altitude. to keep from getting drug Altitude. in, I'm going to shallow it out. A little bit of an overshooting tendency for me today. And now I'm high, so I'm going to drag the two and a half degree line to there, to the end of the runway. Back on speed. There you go. And now hold it off, hold it off. 
Altitude. Well, approach. Altitude. 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 We can uh, depart and re-enter for a um, normal overhead full stop. We'll call it short initial. Race one, Mako one, whoever we are today, base gear, stop. Altitude, altitude. A little slow. Fast, and then there's the Viper pop. Altitude, 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 altitude. Let me just hold that up, hold that altitude. up, hold that up. Let the nose fly down. Echo here. And then after that, turn the lights off, take the seat.
actually fly with the doors off. Don't be a douche. That's rule number one. Make them tell you now.